Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Minis. Today, we're at Swathing number 62. And we, once again, are closing in <laughs> to issue 64, which is the last uh, Alan Moore Swamp Thing. I'm going to tell you, I guess Alan Moore decided let's get fucking weird with this thing in these last couple issues because these last ones have been fairly uh, interesting to read and uh, a little hard to explain sometimes. But uh, he's really pushing the, the boundaries of, of comics and whatnot. So <laughs> this issue is uh, falls in line. So if you remember last issue, uh, Swamp Thing uh, just got off the vegetable planet uh, after having caused a bunch of havoc and uh, killing, I guess, not killing people. I guess he just, he took over their bodies because uh, there were only sentient vegetables on that that planet. And he didn't have anyone to go into that was just, uh, like, empty or whatever. So, uh, he ended up taking over all these big, these people's consciousnesses and making one giant Swamp Thing monster out of it. Terrorizing the uh, city and then until uh, the Green Lantern that just happened to be on that planet uh, showed him a, you know, a body he could inhabit and uh, that was like a friend of his that had passed. And so then Swamp Thing was able to figure out how to get back to Earth to uh, to align his frequencies with the Earth Earth's frequencies and then he left. So he was on his journey back to Earth now that his frequencies have been aligned with Earth um, and he is still traveling in frequency form after that. So... Uh, he is not in his Swamp Thing body yet, uh, but he's in the frequencies. Uh, they Like I said, they look like a five discs or something on top of each other. Like, probably Alan Moore knows more about space-time continuum stuff than I do, so it must make sense to him. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so we get the cover of number 62. It is Swamp Thing, and he is riding on the uh, shoulder of a celestial like an actual Eternals Celestial. So it's funny because this just happened to time out with the week that Eternals comes out in theaters. So we're talking about uh, Eternals in this <laughs> in this one. So we see here on the first page, there is uh, an Eternal who is, it looks like he's strapped or tied down forever to like a rock or something. Um, and I don't know if he's, he's imprisoned or something, but it's him and his lover, and there is a narrator on this issue. He is explaining what is going on. And that narrator is uh, Metron of the New Gods. Uh, he is one of the he's one of Apocalypse's guys. So it's weird because he's not necessarily bad. He just goes around kind of indifferently looking for knowledge of all kinds or whatever. So, uh, but he flies around in his Mobius chair uh, and is looking for knowledge and anything he can take up kind of to help he's supposed to help dark side with his anti-life equation but um so i guess that's where he's bad but like uh like yeah he just he's flying around looking for knowledge so he is the narrator of this issue and we see he is looking at the, the there's two celestials the one that is bound and the one uh the one that is bound is i guess considered the man and there's a woman uh, celestial kind of flying at him and she is freed uh but they're just the, he just talks about them like they're they're stuck in this area. They're they're trying to, um, they're like drifting in eternal separation. Uh, he says they are uh, poor celestials like ourselves who dared to attempt that which I once thought attainable. Condemned to drift in eternal humiliating humiliating separation from each other and from the source. So, I guess these ones have been like banished. Something. Uh, I am not up on my celestial, uh, you know, lore or whatever in, in DC. So, uh, this one was a little confusing just on that part, but basically there's this thing called the source that looks like kind of like those discs that Swamp Thing's made of, but they're all merging into one like cross section. And, um, so it's basically like, oh, it's where all the frequencies are coming together. And, uh, and Metatron is just kind of staring at it like, huh, perhaps... I need to get through that. If I could figure out how to get through that, that would be helpful. Um, and maybe what's on the other side is something, you know, some knowledge I need or whatever. And so um, as he's kind of like flying around these celestials, he notices, hey, there's something weird on uh, on this 
uh, what, female celestial. And he, he looks and there's some kind of like, some kind of something growing, some flora that he never seen before growing on the, the like shoulder of this, uh, this celestial. And then as he's flying, he notices something else on the celestial. Uh, and this is the thing that kind of fucked everything up for Swamp Thing. There just happens to be a mother box. And for all those of you who don't know what a mother box is, that is how, um, I guess these these uh, people get around. I don't know, it's, it's like a technology that opens up boom tubes, what they're called. It's kind of like wormholes. And they allow people to travel through time and space, uh, like Dark Side and people like that, like the new gods. So, apparently, uh, according to Metron, these Celestials at one time were kind of our size, like human size. And then uh, they had the, the mother box, and then they, like, willed themselves to grow gigantic. And he says, like, something cool, like, basically, they're so big that, like, time and space aren't really, like working the same with them like their heart beats like once every generation it says because it's so big and there's yeah stuff like that it's, it's kind of cool how he, he uh, describes them but basically he sees his mother box he's like hey it's the size of a moon uh because basically it was part of them and they blew themselves up in these giant beings so he's like maybe if i shrink it down it will talk to me and help me get through this source wall so he uh he uses a bunch of his power, he says. He says, he's like, I didn't drain it that much, but it was, it was quite a lot of power to shrink it from celestial size to fit in my hand. And so he does that, uh, and he's kind of flying around with his ship, and I guess because his ship was so drained of energy, it kind of crashes, and it turns out he's out of power. And what he doesn't realize is right next to his chair that has just broken down, he's, he's realized... I don't have any ele X element. It's depleted. That's my, you know, my uh, special uh, fuel for this chair. And he's like, without that, no Mobius chair. I won't be able to get out of this place. And he's all pissed off at the mother box. He kicks it. But what he doesn't realize, like I was saying, is there is a giant, or there's a, a bunch of uh, plant life kind of growing next to this, where his, where his Mobius chair crashed. And um, basically it turns out, the mother box caused all this problems for Swamp Thing because it called, like, it felt Swamp Thing's uh, energies flying by his frequency, and it, like, captured it and brought it into, like, the Celestial's body. So it's, like, Swamp Thing's been stuck in this mother box uh, by the Celestials, and then when uh, he kicked, when Metron kicks the mother box, it kind of reactivates the mother box and then allows Swamp Thing to escape, and then he grows on the plant life that had, ne had newly been growing, I guess, since Swamp Thing was amalgamated into the Celestial. So the, the fungus was like kind of just, it was kind of like the fly in Jeff Goldblum. Like <laughs> when Mother Box fused it with the Celestial, Swamp Thing started growing moss or whatever all over the Celestial's body. So uh, Swamp Thing goes to the moss, makes himself a body. And uh, it's very interesting because Metron's like, what is this thing? And Swamp Thing's like, I... I'm Swamp Thing. And then we also see this This issue is called Wavelength. Uh, is, this is actually written by Rick Veach. Uh, he is the guest writer of this issue. And like we said, Alan Moore is kind of winding down in this run. So these last couple issues are kind of co-written by Rick Veach, who is the guy who takes over for Alan Moore after this. And uh, the inker is Alfredo Alcala. So Rick Veach did the writing and the penciling in this issue. And Metron, like I said, he was like, he was like expecting a god or something. He's like, is it a god? Is it a, a demon? What is it? And he's like, and it says he was a vegetable. <laughs> so he is kind of disappointed that Swamp Thing isn't more of a god or whatever. Uh, but uh, Swamp Thing like realizes like, hey, if we can use the mother box to get through the source, because basically he he needs the uh, his frequency to go through the source to get back to Earth, and so. Um, He's like, trust me, Metron. Like, the mother box is talking to me. It's telling me I can do this. I know your Mobius chair is broken, but let me help you. And he basically covers the Mobius chair with himself, which makes himself the new Mobius chair. Like, like yeah, like you can see his head on top of the Mobius chair and his arms are like where the arms were on the Mobius chair. So he is now holding the mother box in one of his hands as he pretends or covers this chair, looking like a chair himself. Uh, and he's like, come on, sit on me. 
take me through this uh, source. You know, you know, we can do it. So they start going through the source and they start going through all this crazy, you know, infinite time, gravity, spectrum, timey-wimey, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, they hit these walls inside of the source and then they break through this barrier and there's, a, I don't know exactly what's going on. Forgive me if uh, I'm not 100% on what's going on. But there's a giant uh, person called a transmuter. He says they're posted along these fringes of reality. They basically turn things from dense compost into higher matter. So, like, their face it is interesting. He looks kind of like Dr. Manhattan, like a blue body that's naked, except his face is just shooting a beam of light out at matter and then it's like turning into other particles and so they're like we have to get through this thing because if he sees us like he's gonna turn us he's gonna see us as like something to turn into you know garbage or whatever so we're like par- or particles basically um so uh swamp things like look we, we can do it i know we can do it uh the mother box has told me if i can just fuse with the source or whatever and like so he uh, realizes that he can do it, and he, he just in time, um, it says, uh, and as I stand before you now, sire, he did it, because this is Metron talking to Darkseid. Although the cost was high, somehow the vegetable was able to attain the correct vibrational pattern, and at the last possible instant, opened the final barrier and provided an answer to the ultimate question at the expense of his own sanity. So, like, basically, I guess Swamp Thing's kind of self is shattered as he, like, becomes one with the new uh, universe that he pushes himself into. Um, And I'm going to say, like, there's a lot of craziness going on in this page. We see, like, uh, the multiverse and, like, the, the stars being born, you know, microbes and swarms and all these, you know, crazy galactic things and... It's just crazy. Like, basically, Metron's like, and I saw everything. Everything. And it's like, I saw a billion years in one second. And I saw this. And I saw that. And, you know, like, yeah. He's, he's, he's seeing, like, all of history at one time now that they broke through the source. I guess that was the information he uh, was, like, looking for. And then uh, and then it says, I feel the mother box and understood her communion with, na- with nature, her connection to the vegetable, and his connection to earth. I saw his face screaming as the madness overcame him. I saw my face. And so, um, and then we see, and he says, I saw your face, sire. And so, this is Hillenburg, who said, talking to Darkseid. So, we get the introdu- introduction of Darkseid. And um, basically, we see Swamp Thing is now sitting on Apocalypse with Darkseid in, like, the evil realm <laughs> The, the the evil planet of apocalypse that the uh, new gods live on and um basically like we said metron is trying to show apocalypse like all that he's learned to hopefully help apocalypse with this uh anti-life equation he's always trying to solve and dark side is like no everything you're telling me doesn't help me at all uh what you're talking about is an elf a-L-E-P-H. I've never heard of this word. And he basically says, L's are points from which one can observe all other points in time and space. So that's why they saw, like, all these things coming together at once kind of thing. And so um, he says, so nothing's really helping me that you found out. And uh, and so then Metron's like, but the source retains its mystery and I have nothing to barter, sire. Nothing I can offer to trade for more X element for my Mobius chair. And then Darkseid says, fear not, Metron. Like, it's fine. Uh, you know, just continue looking. I will give you your precious element X because I think this vegetable has information. Can you tell me about him? Like, what's going on with him? And so, like, Swamp Thing is just sitting there in chair form. He's kind of mentally been broken. But Metron did see his entire history, the, hunt- the entire history of Swamp Thing when he was at that source point uh, alf thing or whatever. So I'm just going to read to you from what this says because it's uh, a little confusing for me to try to break down. So basically he says, um, well, he did come from Earth originally before his aura departed from Earth. He spoke of his many enemies there, accounts that had had to be settled, a woman he fancied. In truth, he was a strange being filled with the kind of longings one associates with humankind. 
I sensed he carried a great power within him, an elemental power that operated perhaps on a planetary scale. And then Darkseid says, you went mad. You say he went mad? Tell me, what would cause one so powerful to lose his sanity so quickly, so efficiently? So he's like, ooh, this is interesting. Um, and then Metron is like, well, it was what he saw when he entered the ALF, sire. In fact, the mother box had to remove all of his memories of the experience in order for him to function well enough to return to return us to normal normal reality um and so uh then dark side says then she would have a record of what the vegetable saw and felt within the elf and metron's like yes so dark side's like bring me the mother box so he brings the mother box to dark side uh and they're like okay we're gonna have to bypass her circuits because you know she can feel and stuff or whatever and won't it doesn't like dark side so Dark Dark Side turns off her like emotional circuitry or whatever, so she can't not like him, and uh, <laughs> it's it's a little weird. It's like a sentient uh, you know machine or whatever. So um, so then he breaks into it and looks inside and sees what uh, what Swamp Thing uh, thinks about and what what memories he had. It's all about Abby. Basically, it's the whole his whole history with Abby. Um, it's him talking. So basically, he's saying, "Abby, my love." I can see your whole life spread out before me. I see you as a child in the arms of your father, as a victim of your uncle's blasphemous evil. Oh, Abby, why can't I touch you? Your life has gone on while I stand like a voyeur on the edge of infinity. There's so much that I never knew, Abby. I didn't want to know. There you are waiting on a customer in that all-night diner. You, You look so young. Sleeping alone, scrunched up with a copy of the Secret Life of Plants, but oh, the moments we sh- are somehow shared—the tiny slices of paradise, the twisted corridors of hell. I love you, Abby. I need you. Forgive me, Abby. Sometimes I despair. Despair for the future. The future, our future together. Oh, please, embracing you, your full lips brushing my own, in the swamp, free from all prying. It's—is it possible? A white hand slowly turning green. I'm diving for pearls in an in an ocean of emerald light. Uh, I see you lost, but happy, laughing. There is no danger, nothing to fear. And basically, he's just going through all these different parts of her history and time and everything. Um, and he says, "The white hand now, emerald grasping the young shoot, Constantine." And we see Constantine's like kind of embracing Abby in one of these uh, panels. Uh, it's like, what? It's like a cordiverous plant the size of a football stadium. Abby, what are you and Constantine, the Parliament of Trees, demanding? Abby, but I love a man burning, running from the swamps. So basically, all these like visions are coming at him from different things. I don't know if this is supposed to be the past, the present. I think it's everything, all time. Because, like, like I said, she hates Constantine, so Constantine and her embracing, we haven't seen that. Um, and same with like, he, there's like one of like a witch doctor and then there's one of like a woman screaming. And then there's one where he says, my name is Alec Olson. He's like, no, Alec Holland. And so like, he's going back and forth between all these different, uh, versions of the swamp thing and all these different memories of times past and times present and times future. And you, we see like his consciousness start to shatter and he says, your love was all that kept me, all that kept me sane. And so, like, through through the shattering of his mind, her love, his, like, focus on her love was what kept him sane. Um, and then we see Darkseid kind of think, and he's like, hmm. And he's like, this is, this is interesting indeed. And he gives uh, Metron some X element for his Mobius chair. And he walks over to his uh, anti-life equation on a board. There's all these crazy symbols and stuff. Some symbols you might know, but a lot of them are for evil and whatnot. Some of them are like, you know, normal human symbols. And uh, it looks kind of like hieroglyphics or something, but there's a lot of like addition, subtraction, multiplication signs, along with religious and hate signs and everything on here. And he's like, I fear this anti, as long as this anti-life equation is unsolved, as long as a scrap of free will exists anywhere in the universe, then dark side remains unfulfilled. Um, and then he says, uh, you have exposed one of the most painful roots of madness 
and thus added an additional additional element to the anti-life equation, Mother Box. And so he he says it's this this uh, I am grateful to Metron and to the vegetable, yes, because uh, basically it had escaped him until now, uh, which, which something that Darkseid was incapable of anticipating is that his equation might need something like love in it. Because if you think about it, love, while being wonderful and uh, keeping Swamp Thing sane, is also capable of making a man or a person uh, like kill themselves or <laughs> shatter their whole will and everything. So uh, he is like, this is interesting. Love. I need love in my equation. So he's going to add love to his anti-life equation. Um, and then we see the next issue is called... Loose Ends Reprise. So if you remember, the first issue of Alan Moore's run was called Loose Ends. And now maybe, I guess, the second to the last or the... Yeah, second to the last issue is also called Loose Ends. Um, and so, uh, yeah, this was a very interesting issue. If you have any questions about it, I might not be able to answer. But if you would like to, you can email me at Planetarians and Comic Books, all one word, at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy. Stay <laughs> swampy.